Hey guys, welcome back. Today on Real Reviews, we're here with another product. It's a Kenmore 4 Burner Smart Gas Grill. Supposedly this grill is all stainless steel construction, so hopefully that means the firebox as well, and that would definitely be nice. Um, I purchased this grill at BJ's and it was on sale for $349. Generally this grill was, I believe, $649. Don't know if it's really worth that much. But um, I will leave a link in the description to the BJ's listing, and hopefully they'll still have some available. So we're going to go ahead and open this box up and see what we have inside. Get started with the scissors. Get these straps off. All right, bye-bye straps. Open this bad boy up. Hopefully this is easy to build. I don't know. We shall find out. And there we go. All right, so right off the bat, what do we have? We have a paper. Oh, how nice. How nice. Beautifully ripped. There you go, guys. We have a Kenmore Smart. You're supposed to download the app. And um, I don't know. It looks like you could control. You can actually see the temperature of what you're cooking. So it has like this little control panel. It's a magnet. It sticks onto this area in the front. And then it has these probes, one for the grill itself. And then it also has a few probes to stick into your, I guess, your steak, your chicken, whatever it is that you're cooking. You can actually monitor it on your phone. So you can be sitting on your couch, drinking beer watching your stuff cook from your couch. Let's see what else we have in this box. Here we go, guys, you ready? Kenmore stainless steel four burner smart group with side burner. There we go. Uh-oh, it looks complicated. Stop, do not build this grill. It's too complicated for you. Once you open the top of the shipping box, slice down its four edges with a box cutter anyhow we have an instruction manual we have a battery and a bunch of screws okay guys we are back and i have this trusty box cutter that i never use so i don't know how trusty it is so we're gonna go around and just i guess uh, cut the sides of this box open and see how it opens be very careful when you're using any type of razors or knives because obviously they're really sharp Boom, there we go. Okay guys, just as instructed, got all the pieces out. Oh, these are some hard pieces of cardboard, wow. I didn't even make cardboard as hard. Almost feels like a piece of metal, so tough. Take the parts from the top and the sides of the grill head. So I guess this is the grill head. So they want you to take everything out of here. Ouch, this is sharp right here, so I probably suggest taking this piece out first. This is super sharp, this edge. So if you try to pull out this piece, you're gonna probably cut your hand on this piece. So just be aware of that. So these materials, they seem a little bit flimsy. I don't know what this is. I guess to go on the top of the grill, it's a little bit flimsy. It's not as, probably as strong as I would like it to be, but you know, unless you're probably paying $5,000 for a grill, probably not gonna get anything too tough. Even this is a little bit flimsy. It definitely seems strong enough to hold a couple hamburgers, whatever this is. Is this a door? Actually, this is not supposed to hold hamburgers. I think this is a door. So I thought this was like the, the side tray. All right, so we got the door. Another door or something. I don't know what this is. It's a piece. It's a piece. This is a gas sensor. This is the warming rack. And let's see what else we got in here. And this is just a grill. Okay, with the aid of an assistant, turn the grill head over on its side or remove the top styrofoam piece. Lift the grill head out of the bottom styrofoam piece. Place the grill head upright on a clean and flat surface. And then you open the grill lid and you take out more stuff. All right, so let's try this. You can do this. All right, we gotta get our trusty little blade over here again. Get that off. Always close your blade, guys. So we got that out. This is the bottom of it. You can take a look at that. Okay, so to take this out, that's what it looks like. So if you just wanna put this on your table and grill like that, then you're done. Just take the boxes out. Here we go. We got a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> Everything is taped together. <laughs> it's like, it's all taped together, just hanging. Try not to kick your pieces like I just did. This is definitely gonna be a project. Another box. It's like Christmas. Look at this. Girls look pretty nice. This is the pan that pulls out. So I don't know if this is stainless steel. But this is the pan usually underneath the grill that rusts out. It's usually the piece that most people buy new grills because it rusts out. And that's why I'm buying a new grill because mine rusted out. So that is the inside of the grill. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty sturdy. 
feels pretty nice. You have your uh, temperature gauge here. And now I guess we get to start building this. Got all your dials, feel nice. I don't think there's no lights or anything on these. There's like no frills, no nothing special, but it actually is five burner total because you have four burners inside of the grill. Actually have, you know, four flame chambers. I don't know what, what you want to call them. And then you actually have an additional burner on a, one of the sides. So it does have the additional burner. So it's five burners. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now we got to build this. Where are the instructions? I lost those. Here they go. And it comes with one little nifty little looking tool there and a bunch of screws. Screws, washers, battery, and a tiny little wrench. I think it's like 250 pages, man. Look how thick this book is. Look at propane gas grill. Danger, danger, warning, caution, warning, danger, warning. A lot of warnings, a lot of dangers. Do not store or use gasoline or other flammable liquids. Don't pour gas directly on your hamburgers. Weird. Weird. Got to test your tank for leakage. Lots of stuff about your propane tank. Lots of cautions. And spider, spider alert. Important. Always ensure that the Venturi burner tubes are clean. A Venturi burner tube has a narrow area which spiders tend to build their nests in. Spider alert. The, the things right here that the gas comes out of, they're saying that spiders build their nests inside of the tubes where the gas comes out of. That's really weird. I never heard of a such thing. So guys, check your grills for spiders, I guess. I don't know. Wow. Look at this. Look at the complexity of this grill. That is absolutely nuts. That is absolutely looks like it's going to take forever. I think, guys, you should have put it, made a little bit of a bigger box, maybe. Made this a little bit more simple, but I don't know. I mean, it can't be that complicated. It really can't. It has to be easier than this, but man, I think most people, they see this diagram and they're like, uh, how do I return this? <laughs> how do I return this? Look at this. You ain't returning this, guys. Look at this. You're not returning that. Okay, so we're just going to hopefully assume that we have all of our parts here. And we're going to start seeing if we can put this thing together. What I suggest you do, the first thing, is you probably want to open all of these boxes and see exactly what you have and what pieces you have together. So I'm just going to take all of this stuff apart without breaking anything. I think the first thing you got to do is you got to put the wheels on. So it can roll around while you're trying to do the rest of the stuff. Yeah, I'm probably not that great for building things videos, but we'll try. All right, so it looks like this is the bottom piece we need to be working with. Okay, and now let's get our wheels, get our screws, and our front piece. Okay, so you're going to use the M410 screws. You're only going to use eight of them. Now, it is nice if you have a magnetic screwdriver to hold the screws. And remember, never over tighten. This is, I don't know, supposedly stainless steel feels about as weak as aluminum. All right, guys, so I finally got that front panel on. Just so you're aware, some of the screws, they don't align up perfectly when you're screwing them in. So you want to back it out and try to get it as perfect as you can because like this one over here, I think I pretty much stripped it out. So just be aware of that. You can strip those screws out really, really easily. Be real careful putting this thing together. So now we're on to the wheels. So it looks like the wheels we're going to be putting on right here. And uh, the ones with the locking mechanisms are going in the back. So these ones with the locks are going in the back. It doesn't really matter which way you put them on because they spin. It actually, it does matter. They have to go like that, but they can still spin. So locks are in the back, and then the ones without the locks are in the front. So these going to go like this, that, and the front ones don't have the locks go up here. And you're putting these all in right here with these uh, M613 screws. These are these ones, 16 of them. This one right here, see, it feels like it's not really going into great. There we go. Now it's going. Okay, guys, so we are back. I got these wheels done. Yeah, I did cheat. I got, I got this over here. Cheated a little bit on the wheels. I definitely would not try using this on the front panel. So we got the wheels on. Now we're supposed to get this piece on right here. Oh, and by the way, these wheels were covered in grease. So you got to be careful with that so you don't get it on your carpet or in your house or wherever. You might not want to get it. Flip this. There we go. Okay, so this has to be facing the front right here. And there we go. Beautifully done. All right, so now it looks like we have to put the side panels on. So we're going to grab the two side panels. This side panel has this little square hole in it. 
So that's going to be the side panel on the right hand side over here. And the other side panel without the little square hole is going to be the other side. Go ahead and get this one on first. Go ahead and put this piece over here. Now these are a little bit sturdier here because they actually have I don't know, some type of piece inside. It feels like some type of steel or some type of harder metal than whatever this is made out of. So it looks like you might be able to screw those in a little bit better, a little bit tighter. And the wheels, they also had, um, they also felt sturdier than this front. Putting this front panel on was really, really weak. And the other ones, they seem a lot sturdier. Maybe we can put these in with this. Let's try. Ta-da! Did it. I did it. All right, next one. It's going to be over here. Once again, we'll go ahead and start them by hand. done throw the top on we're good and i really like these drills too these rigid drills they work pretty good i don't use them that often if you guys want to buy these drills i'll give you a link all right so next thing now we have to put on the back panel all right so back panel how does this go does it matter looks like both sides are exactly the same so back panel is going to go in here like this just kind of halfway get one in i guess and then we'll go around to the other side here So these should go in effortlessly like this. If you line them up right, if they're giving you resistance, they're not lined up right. Don't screw them all the way in until you have them all in and then you can tighten them up. And no drills on this, guys. You will absolutely strip out every single one of these screws if you try to use a drill or a driver on this thing. Okay guys, so we got the back panel on. It was a little bit tricky. Definitely do not use a power tool on that. I kind of messed up one of the screws trying. They didn't want to go in. You're just going to have to just use a little bit of force slightly and it has a retaining bar here. Just snug, but not too much. And there you go. So you got some type of retaining bar holding the back on. Okay, so now this piece, this is the magnetic piece for the front drawers. Kind of get it up here in the hole and a couple screws on either side here. Okay, so that's about as good as that's going to get. Okay, guys, so the next step was these angle brackets. Very hard to see in the diagram as far as what you're supposed to be doing. But these actually go down here in the corners. Okay, guys, so we have to install this electric ignition module right here, and we're also going to be installing these. I don't know, some sort of a brackets or something. They're all going to use the M410 screws, the same little ones we were using before. Electric ignition is what this is. So we just got to take this apart like this. It has a spring in it. That's where the battery goes. Also has a, a little like a uh, plastic nut on it here. Take that off and also take off this rubber piece. This is going to go inside of here. Put it on here like this. Put the little rubber ring back around it. Put this back around. Secure it into place. And I guess that waterproofs it. And then we just put this back in and later on we'll stick the battery in there. Now we're gonna put these shelves in here. You're supposed to turn the grill around to put these on. So these are actually gonna go in here and that's where they're gonna screw in, just like that. And again, on this, you don't wanna cross thread this. So just snug it up, don't over tighten it. All right, so I'll just get these two pieces on and I'll be right back. Okay guys, one thing I just realized, just take a look over here. This igniter piece, this is the way that it's supposed to be positioned. Because later there's going to be a cover that's placed with a screw here and a screw here. So you got to position here. All these are wires you got to connect. Okay, guys. So now the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the doors on. We're going to be putting the door handles on the doors and then putting the doors onto the cabinet. So one thing I was confused about is it's telling you to use four M515 screws. And I didn't read any further because they're pre-assembled to the door handle. So they're already inside of here. They're right here inside. So we're going to go ahead and take those out. And then we're going to put these door handles on. Kind of just got to screw through the hole. Let's go ahead and screw it in here to the handle. Line it up properly and screw it in. All right, there we go. So there's the handle, handle number one. We're going to do the same thing. We get handle number two on, and then we'll be right back to put the doors in. Okay, guys. So we got both handles on right here. Didn't try not to over tighten them. And now we're going to try to get these doors on. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the bottom here. There are a couple of screws right here you could um, unscrew without halfway breaking it to get that to move into position. And you kind of push this in like that and then boom. And then come back over it and tighten any screws down. So that's one door down. And we'll do the same thing here. Hold on. Let's go ahead and just loosen these up a little bit here. 
Okay. There we go. Go ahead and put this in the bottom. Now the top is loose. We can just get that in there. There we go. So now that's in. Now you come over here and just tighten this down. There we go. We got our doors in. See how they look. So we got our cabinet. How does it feel? It doesn't feel bad. It feels, I mean, the size is a little bit flimsy, but it feels a lot sturdier than it did before. I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, happier than I was. So I feel a little bit better about it than I did. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I don't put anything on my channel that I won't personally use. I'm not going to put some trash on there just because somebody paid me to do it and I don't really like it. And I just throw it away or give it away when I'm done. So I might eventually start reviewing products and giving them away, but not because I don't like them, just because I don't have enough room to keep so many things. So anyhow, just keep that in mind, guys. If you see something on my channel, I personally use it. or I personally really like the item and believe in it or else I'm not going to put it on there for you guys to buy just so you know. So if this ends up not being good, you're not going to see this review. By the way, we're on page four. Okay. We got to go all the way up to 10. 10 is when the grill is supposedly done. And we didn't even do the hard part yet. This is all easy. All the easy parts. You can take a look at what we got so far. Go ahead and take a look. Take a little peek there. See what we got going on. Not bad. Oh, cool. Now, look, this is going to be the part that you guys have all been waiting for. Maybe not. I don't know. We're actually going to be putting the top on, the actual grill. Anyhow, let's go ahead and take a look at this thing and see what we got going on here. So first things first, let's take a peek. I don't see any wires. Don't see any wires there. We can lift this up at all. And there's the wires. There's the stuff that they're talking about. There's a whole bunch of wires and a whole bunch of stuff to untangle here. Okay, so guys, we're going to untangle this and we're going to figure this out. I just pulled this cable out right here. You got to be careful because this cable can only be bent so much before it'll break. And this is going to be carrying gas. So that's kind of dangerous. Um, so we're just going to take this and put it on top just like this. Leave this to the side and see if we can figure it out as we go along. Okay, guys, so you definitely need to have two people to do that. So we just did that real quick. And we got this top piece on. It has to slide in to these brackets right here in order for you to be able to screw it in on both sides in order for it to be even. Okay, guys. So before we can even get started with figuring out these wires, we're going to have to bolt this top piece to the bottom um, cart. So in order to do that, we're going to need these M6 times 13 screws times four of them. So we can start from this side right here so you can see it. So these screws right here just going right here. In the sides. That's all. So this is what the grill looks like overall. It looks pretty nice. I mean, honestly, it looks a pretty nice grill so far. Okay, guys. So I think we got the wire situation under control. I'm still not sure exactly where one of the plugs is going to plug into, but I can tell you the rest of them. So the wire that was just that's just black right here and it has two wires coming off of it is going to plug in down here to this spot. The wire with the red is going to plug in where the red is right here. All the other four wires for the burners, one, two, three, four, they just plug in here. And then the one wire that was loose, that we had that was loose, is actually plugging in right here. And then it's going up and it's going out the side. So you can see that one coming out the side over here. Take a look. The outside. So that one is actually this one right here that's plugged in. So this wire right here, this is this one that's plugged in here at the bottom. So those are all the burner wires. And then what you're going to do is you have this little clip right here, this little clip. So you get the wires underneath that clip. There is a screw on the outside. You can loosen it. You get the wires underneath the clip and then you tighten it down. And then last but not least, last but not least, you're going to take this piece right here. And this piece actually goes over it like this. You want to get your wires to the little slot so you're not, you're not um, damaging them this like a little slot up here at the top and then that's going to screw in right here here and here at the bottom so it goes in from the outside in like that there we go so we got it in now we got to go around over here and tighten it up right here and right here there we go now we can see right here we got our beautiful cover in place we got all of our wires all nice in there there's our wires there's our cover 
all going out as they should. So we're going to be attaching the fascia, which is this right here, to the left side shelf. In order to do that, in order to do that, you're going to need two M5 times 10 hex bolts and two M5 flat washers, which I already have right here. And then you're also going to need two 4 times 10 hex bolts, which I also have right here. I'm just going to get ready and start putting this together. So the way that this goes is going to be like this. And the ones with the washers are going to be the ones that go on the bottom. There's another spot you don't really want to cross thread. You got to be really careful that it's going in smoothly. And we've got to get it in perfectly straight. And there we go. And it's just going super smooth like butter. There we go. Okay. So actually, you only need one M4 times 10 hex bolt for this part. And that's going to go right here. Okay, so we're about to go ahead and attach the left shelf. What we're going to need to do this, we're going to need two, actually three M6 by 13 screws. We need M6 flat washers, also three of those, and one M4 by 12 screw. So the way that you do this, kind of interesting. I had to figure this out. Right here, you see, it has a, looks like you can slide it down. You're going to take these two screws right here, here, and here, and you loosen them until they're sticking out about that far, like that. Then you're going to take this, you're going to put it over it, right here and right here, and you slide it down. And then these screws right here will tighten from the, from the outside. From the outside in, those tighten. And then you have to get these three right here, right here, one at a time. This is going to go right here at the top. So where is it? Right underneath here. And you just lip right here, that's the top. And he's going to go in like this. Okay, there we go. So that's what's going to be holding that in. And then lastly, there is going to be one more screw. So you have three there. You have one, two, three. And then there is one more screw. It's going to be going so right up underneath here is where it has to go. Okay, so just to show you guys where all of these screws go, we got three screws. We got one, two, three, right there. And then over here, we have to tighten these two that we slip these down onto. So we have this one right here, one. And then we have two right over here. And then the final screw to put the fascia on was right here. That's the one that held it onto the bottom. So those are all the screws you need to put this left panel on. Okay, guys, so this is for the right-hand side. This is the part that includes the burner. We have to attach the fascia right here for the side burner. And in order to do this, you're going to need these. You're going to need two M510 hex bolts right here. Two M5 washers, which I have here, and then one M4 times 10 hex bolt, which I have right here. And it's exactly the same way as we did the other one, except uh, just different. No, I'm just kidding. It's pretty much exactly the same, except we have this tube in the way. So you just put this up to the side. You're going to have the M2510 down here at the bottom, and then the M410 the hex bolt is going to be right over here going into this top hole. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get that together, and then we'll be right back. Okay, guys, so right here, as you can see, here's the M5 by 10 bolts right here. And then the 4x10 is right up underneath here where I have to screw in. So those are the three that you need to put this fascia on for the burner side. The next thing is going to be basically the same as the other side. Now be careful because this does open. Right here is the same way as the other side. You're going to take these two bolts right here. You loosen them about that much. There we go. Now you're going to take this piece without letting it open. And you slide these on. Slide these over like this and down. There we go. So those are on. So that's kind of just kind of hang right there. And then we do the same thing. We're going to have the 6x13 with the washers. They're going to go in at the top over here, just like you did over here. One, two, three. We're going to have those three. And then from the other side, you're going to have the one that holds the fascia on, the 4 times 12 screw. So that's going to hold the fascia on right here. So you have the M. You have the, the three M6 by 13s with the washers and then the one 4 by 12 screw. And then you got to remember underneath here, you have to tighten the two screws. So these are the screws that we loosened earlier. Those got to get screwed down. That, so we got one here and they're kind of hard to get to because this tube is in the way here for the burner. Here's the second one right here. All right, so we'll go ahead and put the one here for the fascia. And that one's just going to go right here on the side. And there we go, fascia's in. Now we go inside here, grab these washers and these screws. I'm just going to go ahead and put these three in. They go right up underneath here. Just like that. Then we got the other two to go. 
Okay guys, so this is the most confusing part so far as far as how to hook up this burner and how to hook up all of this underneath here, all the rest of this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have to unscrew these two screws here that are holding the burner to let this hang. So take that out, take this other one off, and now the burner is basically just gonna be loose. Okay, so here's the burner piece. Now the way this has to go, first of all, let's put the, set this to the side for right now. This piece over here, right here, this piece is gonna go through this hole right here, right up here. And then uh, this piece right here, that piece is gonna actually go into this burner tube. So what we're gonna have to do is we need to bend this tube right here. We need to take this tube and bend it up so we can bring that over to get that into the spot. And then we'll come back and connect the wires. So we'll be right back as soon as we get this situated. So anyhow guys, the screws that are attaching this right here, they actually were already in the piece. So you have to actually unscrew them. And um, uh, let's go ahead and just screw these in real quick so it holds it. Because this is kind of tricky. It has like, this metal bendable gas cable back here that's got to be very careful with. You can see kind of where I bent it up there. So I kind of had to bend it like this. And I'm also going to bend it up like that just to kind of get it out of the way. So you're not seeing it from underneath. And that should be good enough. You don't really want to bend that cable too much because it is a gas cable that is carrying gas and you don't want to have that like, you know, moved around too much. Now, obviously, this right here is going to go through the side door because this is what connects your actual gas canister. So now what we have left to do is so this wire right here, this wire right here is going to go ahead and plug in right up on the top here into this. It's kind of tricky to get that in there. Here we go. And we just plug that in right there. Done. And then put this back into position. So really, that just goes over it like that. Once you put this on, you go ahead and tighten the two bolts back up at the top that you took off. So you have to take these two bolts off for this to be loosened. You tighten those back in place. And then the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this wire right here. I guess it's better to kind of run it up through here, maybe. Kind of run it around here. Kind of up through here, maybe up through here, like that. Just kind of get it out of the way and then put it on the electrode. There we go. Right up there like that. Done. So now it's on the electrode. So that's it. And last but not least, you got to put the battery in here. I don't know if there's anything else to do here. Let's take a look at the manual. And then we just got to probably put the pieces of the grill on and stuff like that. Place the heat diffusers over the burners. And then place the cooking grates onto the grates, insert the warming rack into the brackets at the top of the firebox, stick the magnetic smart device on. Just like that. There we go, so that's on. I'll go ahead and close that. He's got to go on top here. I'm going to go sit right in here, between here and here, like that. And now the other couple things you got to do is we're going to put these on. And obviously we're going to wash all of this stuff before we use it. But for right now, we'll just put it on the grill. Probably like this. That one. Slide that over. Get those on. You got that. This is going to go just going like this. There we go. We got the warming rack. And now we're going to place these pieces in. This looks like this just slides into here like this. What does it say? Remove tray, clean regularly. Remember guys, clean regularly. And this is going to go over here and slide into the back. And that's your bottom, I guess, catch-all tray. Okay, so we got pretty much everything in there. Now it's got a bunch of cool stuff in here. So we have this thing right here. A bunch of little probes we're going to be putting in here. Here we go. Beep, turned on. Nice. Got some numbers. And this kind of just goes in like this. And this just sits right in here. It's just magnetic, so you don't screw it in or anything. Boom. Just a magnet. That just sits right there on the, on the outside. Now, you also do have a temperature gauge right here on the lid. Here's the little skewers that you use to stick into your food. Those four for your food. And this one right here that actually goes um, to the grill itself. And I guess this kind of goes into the grill and then you stick this piece through here, kind of like that somehow. 
and this kind of measures the temperature of inside of your grill and that plugs into the box. Go ahead and put this knob on that I completely forgot about. And it looks like I was supposed to actually put this on before I take one screw off. All right, so one screw's off. So now we're supposed to have this black line facing up. Take this, get it in there like that. And then we're gonna get the screw back in here. Line it, actually, I have to line this up first. So this was uh, obviously supposed to go on first and I just didn't do it right. These knobs are not aluminum, by the way. These are just, these are just plastic. Anyhow, this just goes in like this. There we go. Okay, so that part is in. What is the last part we're missing here? Oh, I remember. We are actually missing this piece. And this, supposedly, is me measures your propane, probably by weight, I would figure. And it tells you if you have propane left or not. This looks like a giant toilet bowl ring that goes under your toilet, if you guys have ever done that. Got four batteries. All right. We're gonna take this out. We'll check this and see if it even works or not. This will be interesting. Okay, so we have a screw. It requires a little screwdriver, which this may not be little enough, and it isn't. Okay. Okay, guys, so one thing to note is I had this on backwards. This part is supposed to go, like the exposed area is supposed to go to the back. The curved area is supposed to go to the front. So now I have it on right. And this, we're going to go ahead. We have to undo this screw here with a small, tiny little screwdriver and try not to lose the screw. Let's see if I can even get the screw out of there. We got the battery compartment exposed here. I'm going to throw in the batteries. This has an on and off switch. So this is a off, on. We'll just go ahead and put it in. Suppose you get it in here. These line up with those little holes on the bottom and you turn it until it locks. There we go. And you won't know where it's locked. Okay. So now basically you're going to take your tank, you're going to put it on top of this. I guess this kind of holds it on the top. And then you put your little uh, regulator on it. I guess we could probably leave this outside. I don't know what else to do with that. I just like get that out of the way. Get out of here. So this is going to go onto the tank. And um, I guess that's pretty much all you need. So we got to get a tank in here. We're going to get this outside. We're going to get a tank in it. We're going to clean up the grates and everything. And then we're going to go ahead and try it out and see how it works. Here is the finished grill, guys. It looks pretty good. Pretty good. Check it out. So not bad. I mean, it feels kind of, feels pretty sturdy now. I mean, you can definitely roll it around. But it feels sturdy now that we got all the, all the pieces on. Doesn't feel bad at all. Got your side burner. Got everything going there. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, guys. So we got the grill all together. We have the grates cleaned. This is the proper positioning of them. So this is supposed to have the curve facing you like this. And these are supposed to have these little uh, squares open at the bottom here. So we got everything supposedly the way that it goes. And now one other thing I want to show you. I did purchase this mat from Amazon. This is a fireproof grill mat that we're going to put on the floor underneath the grill. And um, I don't know. I didn't open it up yet. So we're just going to open it up and see what it looks like. And it's kind of big here. Kind of looks good. Look at that. Feels like some very, very sturdy material. Looks pretty nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this outside and we're gonna bring the grill out and put it on top of it. And then we'll be right back to show you the grill in action. Nice. Okay guys, so we have the grill outside. We have the grill mat on the floor. We have the gas tank in the grill ready to go. And it is kind of cool because it does have that little sensor down here. We go ahead and turn this on, hold it for a couple seconds. This turns on and actually tells you your gas level right here. It shows that it's full. And you also can, uh, I also put the ambient probe, look, it's showing 91 degrees. So I have the ambient probe right here inside. I stuck it in the back, kind of wrapped it around, and it just plugs right into the back from the inside underneath here is where it plugs in. So now I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on and see, what, see if it works. Go ahead and turn the gas on. Don't smell anything leaking. That's good. So we got that one on low. Let's go ahead and turn this one on. There we go. So just turn them on all the way like that. And they're all on. That last one on. There we go. The last one's on. Okay. So you got them all on low here. So usually I like to like heat it up on low so to make sure they're actually all on. So that's on, that's on, that's on. They all seem to turn on pretty easily. Go ahead and close that. See the temperature right here is 100, 103. See it's going up there. And then over here it also has 
a temperature gauge. As it gets hotter, it should show up there. And let's see if this one works. Be careful because this opens up really, really far. You don't want it hitting your wall or breaking off or whatever. Oh, that didn't come on. Ooh, there we go. That works too. There we go. Nice. So that's everything. So here's the inside. Everything seems like it's working well. Temperature's going up. We have 150 right now. Keep it a good distance from the wall because there's definitely heat coming out here. There's a lot of heat coming out of this back piece right here. So you want to get, you want to make sure that heat has some room to escape. Guys, so the grill right now is at 400 degrees, 401 degrees. So the first thing we're going to do, I guess we're going to put some burgers on the grill. Let's go ahead and open it up. It is steaming hot in there. All right, put this last one on. All right, put these sausages in here. Ooh, I almost stayed up. There we go. Something like that. So we got some food on the grill. There it is. Check it out. It's cooking. All right, guys. So look at that. The food is cooked. Everything worked out well. We pretty much kept the grill on low the whole time. I just wanted to kind of come back and just show you guys how everything cooked. Now, obviously, the grill is a mess. It's never going to stay clean. You already know that if you ever grilled before. So there you guys have it. This is the Kenmore 4 burner stainless steel smart grill. And the smart portion is great. I really like that thermometer there. That's pretty cool. Try not to like rub your burgers against it like we did, and then it won't get dirty. Anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell button so you never miss another video on Real Reviews. Time for the burgers. See you guys next time.